Hi, I'm Phyllis Southern Frugal.com. This afternoon I wanted to talk with y'all about freezers and I've had a, a several questions uh, in asking if I didn't get freezer burn in our freezer. And the answer is no, I have never gotten freezer burn on anything. And uh, to start with, I wasn't sure why, but uh, part of the reason is um, we have a freezer that doesn't defrost itself. I have to defrost it. And because I keep smoothie stuff in the freezer and I basically open it at least every other day, um, I have to defrost it about every three months. I really probably wouldn't have to then. I just have gotten used to doing it that way. But anyway, I wanted to talk to you about the uh, history or my experience with freezers. So the very first freezer that I purchased was a whopping 22 foot chest freezer. We had two gardens and uh, me and a friend of mine got together and bought a cow at auction and she got half of it and I got half of it. And uh, so even with all that, my freezer was never full. The 22 cubic foot was never full. And um, so I ended up uh, selling that one. And then with various moves and everything. So uh, the next freezer I got was when we moved into this house right here. And um, that was when the almond color was really in for appliances. And so I bought an upright that defrosted itself. And it wasn't a year before I had regretted that, really regretted it, because it did not keep the uh, food as hard frozen as the chest freezer did. So after a while, I just emptied it and it sat in the kitchen for maybe another year. And I just decided I'm selling it because I knew a lot of people bought the frost free kind. So I simply put an ad in the paper and the first day it appeared, uh, a pastor from a church called and wanted it and he came right by with his truck and hauled my freezer away. And I was so glad to get rid of that freezer. I just never liked it. So the next thing, uh, several more years went by and I had had uh, experience that I would call not very satisfactory. Uh, the chest, the 22 cubic foot chest freezer was too big. Uh, I never filled it up and the upright uh, did not keep stuff as firmly frozen as I was used to. And actually I think my, my refrigerator freezer kept things harder than that one did. So, uh, but I did, uh, we did buy chickens in bulk one time and uh, let me see what else, I can't remember. Anyway, so uh, I had gotten rid of that freezer, so a number of years went by, and I wanted to, uh, Mr. Bucky was working in another town 200 miles from here uh, during the week and was home on the weekend, and he was eating a lot of fast food and frozen TV dinners. And so I decided I would fix him some dinners that he could take on Monday morning with him, and uh, in order to do that in bulk, I needed a freezer. I certainly didn't want to get a big freezer because I'd already experienced that and that wasn't what I wanted. So I thought, well, I'm just going to get a little rinky-dink freezer, nothing big, a little chest freezer, and that'll work. And so that's what I did. I went to Lowe's and uh, bought that little freezer for, I think, $125. And I, I wrote down this the cubic feet, I think it was uh, a 7.1 cubic foot freezer is what I think it was. It was not the narrowest one, but the next size up chest freezer. And uh, in fact, I think we had a station wagon back then. I think they actually loaded it into the back of my car, as I recall. And then when, when uh, oh no, wait, we had a truck back then, sorry. We had a little utility type truck and they put it in the back and when I got home, I, Mr. Bucky wasn't here, so I just backed it up to the front door and slid it onto the porch and slid it right on into the kitchen and it worked great. It really did, it just worked fantastic. So we did those meals for, for any number of years 
and uh, then I decided uh, I needed to freeze more stuff and we were getting stuff out of our little garden here plus I was going to the farmers market so I decided I needed a bigger freezer again I went for the type that does not defrost itself because remember I'd had one like that and it was just not satisfactory so uh, I this time I went to Sears because I'd kind of well, first of all, let me tell you, the little chest freezer I bought for $125, I think I had it for two full years. Put an ad in the paper, the first day it appeared, someone came and purchased it for $125. So basically I used it for two years for free and it worked, it worked great. And so the next one is the one we have now, which uh, we bought from Sears and it's a Frigidaire. It is the kind that doesn't have the fan in it, so it's uh, you have to defrost it, but it actually keeps uh, food hard or frozen, and you have adjustments on it too. So anyway, I do defrost that one about every three months, and uh, sometimes in the winter I go a little longer than that, but it does get ice on it. Now, again, I've never, ever, ever remember taking anything out of the freezer that had freezer burn on it. Now, I think that the uh, upright type freezers that are no frost or frost free is the type freezer that you get freezer burn on. Although I had one like that and I never remember getting it, but we had a big turnover because I would buy in bulk. So anyway, to uh, go back to, to why I did that. I, I bought the small chest freezer uh, to do uh, foods that uh, I, I would freeze, you know, in little meals like a homemade TV dinner, and they would go with Mr. Bucky on Monday morning. And I usually did four because on uh, Wednesday at, at the school where he was headmaster, they uh, women came in and prepared meals for the students and the faculty. So anyway, that brings us up to present. So I'm very delighted with my Frigidaire. And I think it's, if I remember correctly, I think it's an 18 cubic foot upright freezer. It's definitely taller than my refrigerator because I have trouble cleaning the top of it and I'm tall, okay? So it's, it's pretty big. And, but it does have shelves in it. Now, when you have a freezer that's got shelves in it, you do have some lost space because you can't just pack it, you know, you don't get the right size, so you, you can't pack everything right up to the top of the next uh, little uh, shelf. But I do keep my uh, smoothie stuff all in the bottom basket of the refrigerator. So that includes strawberries, frozen strawberries, blueberries, bananas, mango, um, Sometimes, and I, right now I have got a couple of uh, uh, quinoa that I cooked and then I freeze them in the little uh, cupcake pans to put in the smoothies also. And when I do oatmeal, cream of wheat together, I put that in. I freeze it first on a, a big cookie sheet and then I just transfer it to a plastic bag. But we do have pretty big turnover. Uh, I, I do that deliberately, so nothing ever really, like I'm, I probably never keep hamburger over a month, if that long, I just don't. But uh, anyway, uh, we uh, did with the other freezer buy uh, uh, chickens. We had a packing plant that's uh, up in West Columbia that, it, in fact, it was close to the airport that sold uh, the white skin chickens, which are always smaller and always tender. So uh, this was years ago and me and my daughter um, bought a hundred chickens and she took 50 and I took 50. And they were, they were quite delicious. That company changed hands and they started doing the yellow chickens and we bought them one time there and no more. And I know chickens are a lot different now. We, we particularly like the Purdue chickens, especially whole chickens. Uh, they don't have any hormones or anything like that that's introduced into their food. So anyway, back to the, I got carried away there. All right, so back to the freezer. So if you're a young person or even an older person that's never had a freezer before, my best suggestion would be go to Lowe's, maybe Home Depot, even Walmart, 
and buy an inexpensive chest freezer. It'll probably have one little basket in it, and you can actually buy dividers for that, for a chest type freezer now, and uh, start out with a small one. And just remember, you know, if you decide, oh, wait a minute, I want a bigger freezer than this, then you could either get another freezer that's the same as that one and do meat in one and vegetables and fruit in the other. Some people do it that way. Or you could just put an ad in the paper. They sell just like that, okay? People are always looking for freezers. And uh, then get you a, a bigger one, either a bigger chest freezer or um, a, a bigger uh, upright freezer. Now, I, I really could never, ever recommend the freezer that defrost itself or the frost free because my experience was not good and certainly I've talked to many other people that don't like those either because even though you have to defrost the upright now that are not frost free uh, they, they defrost and I can take all the stuff out of my freezer I usually put a comforter down on the table a down comforter and put all my stuff on the table in the kitchen, cover, pull the down comforter over it, cut the freezer off, and really less than an hour, all the ice comes off because of the way they're making them now. Because mine has the inside is that porcelain. It looks like the outside of, of the refrigerator. So they defrost very easy. I just put some a uh, couple of dish pans in the bottom to catch the water and they do have a little drain at the bottom, I just never use that. And then uh, take a towel and, you know, usually use baking soda and a little water, wipe them down, then dry them out real quick. And you, you, when you defrost them, you want to just dry it out really good. I've even used bath towels for that. Just dry them out really good, plug it back in, cut it on, put your food back in, it, you're done. It's really that quick. And also, because you have to defrost them every so often, that prevents things like you've got something in the back of the freezer that you've forgotten it's been there a year and a half. I mean, you're going to throw it out, okay, if you can even recognize it. So uh, by having to defrost them every so often, you get a good idea of what your inventory is. Now, speaking of inventory, when I had the big, my first freezer, which was a big 22 cubic foot, and we had half a cow in it, and chicken. I got chicken then from uh, some, um, a Mennonite farm that was not, this is when we lived in Virginia, which was not far from where we were, and all kinds of stuff. I mean, I spent more time trying to fill up that freezer than I did actually cooking the stuff from the freezer. I mean, it was just, I don't know, I don't know what the problem was, but so uh, my friend said, well, you know, do an inventory and write it on a sheet and just put it on top of the freezer and every time you take something out, you know, check it off that you don't, you only have three left of those and all kinds of stuff like that. And that worked maybe about two weeks and I'm like, I ain't doing this because you know, you go in there and you say, well, okay, we want chicken for supper. Oh no, we don't. We want pork chops and stuff gets all jumbled around and everything goes out the window then. So. Anyway, uh, I was working then, so of course I didn't have a lot, whole lot of time, and uh, it just kind of got out of hand. So I was never able to do an inventory. So when uh, we had the small freezer and I was making frozen TV dinners for Mr. Bucky, uh, once again, I decided I would do the inventory. So I wrote down what I had. Okay, I've got 20 meals of, of um, meatloaf and potato, I'd write down what it was, okay, we've got uh, four meals of this, and then he would say, don't send me any more chicken, send, send hamburger or send meatloaf or send pork, I don't want any more chicken. So what was I going to do with it, right? And then it just got all jumbled up, and so then I said, well, I'm not doing ever again am I doing an inventory. It's just a total waste of time. So I don't ever do that anymore. But I pretty much know exactly what's in my freezer. Now, because I have to open it at least every other day to take out what we're gonna have, uh, 
that does cause it. I definitely have to defrost it every three months in the summertime. Now this is August, and I'm, as I'm recalling, I defrosted it the last time towards the end of May. So it, it's about every three months. And uh, also, if it, uh, a freezer is much more efficient, of course, if it's full. And we rarely have ours full, but we do have a good turnover of stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna take y'all in there and show you the inside. I've already shown it on one video, but things are different now because I'm not going to the farmer's market simply because we've got our house up for sale and you never know when you're gonna sell it. And I don't wanna to have to, you know, just get rid of a whole bunch of frozen food. So I have not been going to the farmer's market in really several months, really. But anyway, uh, I'll take y'all in there and show you how it looks now. All right, hold on. Okay, here's the freezer. It is a Frigidaire and it's pretty tall. It's a lot taller. It's probably, I don't know, I don't know if it's six foot or not, but you see it goes right up to the top of the cabinet. All right, we're going to open it up real quick. All right, on the top shelf, I've got bread. I've got some ciabatta bread I bought in Walmart, some French bread, there's some cake, there's the um, croutons, and there's some some of those rolls which I love and I'm not sure what that is right back there oh that's some of that cornbread I remember the cornbread that with uh, cheddar cheese and bacon uh, that's got a couple of pieces of that which we'll have there's all the dinners we've got left which is just two so I've got to make some more there's spaghetti back there and soup 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 and there's that bean soup and i don't think that's vegetable soup now these are the containers that the dates came in from sam's club and they work really really well especially for soup all i do is sit it down in some warm water and just pop it out of the pot right into the I pop it out of this container right into the pot put a little bit of water in it turn it on low and probably 20 minutes or so it's ready and I keep all my vegetables on this row right here. And this is the meat and fish one. We don't really eat hot dogs anymore. Those have been in there a while. I've got some ribs back there, a couple of pork chops. And I also bought this, and they said to freeze it, organic lard. I've got another one I use. And then down here are, uh, is all the stuff for the, for the smoothies. That's uh, mango, strawberry, almonds, uh, dates, and this is extra smoothie that I fixed double, and this was one where we only had a little bit left over. In this carton, which is one another one of those salad cartons, there's frozen grapes. And let's see. Uh, this is one where I didn't want the salad mix to go bad, so I went ahead and ground it up in the bottom mix. And there are the bananas. I also keep those in a little container. Now, when I was going to the farmer's market, of course, I bought a whole box of bananas, and they were this whole sh whole basket. And in the door, got almonds, walnuts, and cashews. And I go ahead and freeze the nuts. Then we got chips, Mr. Bucky's mini donuts that he has to have. And uh, potato chips, I freeze those because we don't eat very many at all. And I even freeze these little miniature marshmallows because I put it on sweet potato souffle and then some cookies from Aldi's. That's what I keep in the door. And if we have ice cream, we put it right in that section right there, which we hardly ever buy anymore. All right, I'm gonna close that up. So you see it's not full at all. Now, if I was still going to the farmer's market, that would be jam-packed full. So I anticipate that after we move into another, our new house, whenever we get it built, uh, we will probably be keeping the freezer either on the porch or in a utility room. Anyway, let me get that closed up. All right, so that's the deal with the uh, freezer and uh, my opinion of them is, of course, that uh, you need to get one that, that uh, you have to defrost. It's going to keep the food better. I think that 
part of the reason that people get freezer burn is because they have a, a freezer that uh, you know doesn't get frost on it so you've got to have some kind of little heating element in there it's kind of think of it like um, an ice maker what that does it freezes the ice but then for the ice to come out it's got a little heating coil underneath it heats it up so the ice will dump out so that would make the freezer not always as cold as it probably should be anyway y'all these are just my opinions y'all give yours down below um, just freezer burns a problem in a freezer I mean because it can ruin meat now I, I don't know I think I've had those ribs in there maybe six weeks and haven't haven't made them yet and uh, the pork chops have been in there maybe two or three weeks the chicken maybe two weeks and it I, I just never have freezer burn but I also uh, turn my inventory over a lot and uh, so anyway, I hope that helps y'all because uh, several people have written in and wanted to know about getting a freezer. And I'm also going to leave a link right down below from the uh, Consumer Report and you could watch that video and see what they have to say about it. And they can also tell you uh, the best brands to get. Now, I consulted Consumer's Report back in, it was really in the early 70s when I got my first freezer at my first chest freezer, that one that was a 22 cubic foot. And uh, it, uh, this was, that was the brand they recommend. I don't even remember what it was now. I mean, it was a good freezer, but I bought one that was way too big and I never filled it up. So a, a freezer that's full is a, a lot more efficient than one that's not. So anyway, oh, my hand slipped, sorry. All right, back up. Oh. sorry my hand was on that zoom button anyway we will see y'all next time i hope this helps bye for now